Hey everyone, this is Cody, and in this video I'm going to be reviewing the ZWO ASI 533mm Pro. Now today I'm going to be looking at the specs of this camera, as well as comparing it to the 183 series of ASI camera, and also I'm going to be taking a deep dive into the frames that I've taken with this camera. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump into it. Now to start things off, I just wanted to talk about this camera a little bit in general, and it's very impressive, especially if you look at the color version of this camera, how popular it's been and how amazing the images are that have been taken with it, this is gonna be a camera I think that's equally as popular and you'll see some incredible shots that are taken with this camera. So the 533 uh, series uses the Sony IMX 533 sensor. It has a well capacity of 50,000 electrons. The pixel size are 3.76 square microns. And the really intriguing thing is this camera has a 14-bit ADC, so that's already a nice upgrade over a lot of the previous generations of cameras. The read noise is also very excellent, and there's no amp flow. So that's one thing I will focus on a little bit today is showing you some dark frames I've taken, especially some really long ones. And you don't see any amp go, and the noise is very well controlled in this camera. So there's really a a strong backing for the 533 as being an amazing camera and the, the color version has already proven that. Now the interesting thing about the Sony IMX 533 sensor, it's square. So if you're not used to that, it does take a little bit of getting used to. I like to call it the uh, Instagram ready sensor, um, but I actually used a square sensor my entire time in graduate school imaging asteroids and you get used to it pretty, pretty quickly. Now, there's actually two main benefits though to using a square sensor. Number one is, well, most of the images we take in astronomy are of things that are round, right? So if you're trying to fit the moon into your field of view, it's actually a lot easier to do that with a square sensor and same with the sun. So that's one big benefit. Now, the other benefit to using a square sensor is if you're using an off-axis guider and you decide to rotate your camera 90 degrees, the pickoff prism stays in the same position relative to the sensor. So I can rotate 90 degrees, rotate another 90 degrees. The pickoff prism does not intrude over the sensor. Whereas if you're using a rectangular sensor, when you rotate 90 degrees, you can start to intrude over the top of the imaging sensor. So that is a subtle benefit, but it is a benefit nonetheless. So now I'm gonna show you a few frames that I've taken with this camera. So we're gonna go ahead and start with the dark frames then I'm going to show you a couple images I've taken and analyze each individual channel and that should give you a good idea of the noise and the quantum efficiency you can expect out of this camera. Now speaking of quantum efficiency, ZWO reports that this camera has a max peak quantum efficiency of 91%. Now I really don't like that term. I feel like it's a marketing slash like a selling term because it doesn't really tell you anything. All that says is at one specific wavelength the camera is 91% efficient. I feel like a much better term or value to report would be the average quantum efficiency across the visible spectrum. So about 400 to 700 nanometers. And if you look at the graph of the quantum efficiency of this camera, you'll see in the blues and in the greens, it's pretty efficient. And then as it gets down into the reds, it starts going down and that's very normal. So I would say if I had to estimate looking at this graph, the average quantum efficiency across the visible spectrum is about 70% or so, which is still really good. But yeah, I just feel like that's a much better term to report because quantum efficiency, the overall quantum efficiency of the camera is important in people's purchasing decisions. Not a lot of people really care about that peak QE because again, that's just at one wavelength. It doesn't really say anything else about the others. Anyways, I digress. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the dark frames of this camera and we'll jump into that section. Okay, here is a five minute or 300 second dark frame taken through the ASI 533mm Pro. Uh, binning was one by one here and the gain was set to 100 and the cooler was activated for negative 20 degrees below ambient temperature. I think the ambient temperature was about 35 degrees Fahrenheit or so when this was taken. But the thing that stands out to me the most instantly right when I took it was you know, no amp glow as advertised, so that's great. But the other thing was just kind of how clean this dark frame is. There's obviously a dark frame maps out the dark noise, but it was a lot cleaner than I expected and just really smooth looking. And it kind of reminds me of the ASI 2600. 
The two cameras, the 533 and the 2600, are kind of that newer generation of sensor, and the results speak for themselves. They're quite impressive. So I decided to go a bit longer here and take a 10 minute dark. And you can see here, obviously there's gonna be an increase in noise here because the exposure is longer. But again, no amp glow whatsoever here and still pretty clean looking. So I think 10 minute exposures through this won't be a problem whatsoever. Uh, you know, it has those big well capacities as well for, for managing that. It would mainly be a question of whether, you know, your mount and your telescope system can handle an exposure that long. But in terms of your dark frame, this camera is looking really good. So then I thought, you know, I'm going to put this to even a higher test, see if I can get any amp glow at all. So I shot a 30 minute dark here. And the, again, these other darks were taken at the same settings as the first one, and there's no amp glow at all. So again, naturally there's gonna be more noise in this because the exposure is longer, but not even the slightest uh, hint of amp glow here uh, whatsoever. So the sensor, this back illuminated sensor, the wiring, everything is put precisely in place so that you don't really get any leakage um, onto that that sensor whatsoever. You're not getting any like false signal um, that you don't want. This, These dark frames are very impressive. They're very clean. And so, yeah, that should kind of give you an idea for, for what this camera is capable of. Now here's an image I took of the North America Nebula NGC 7000 using the ASI 533mm Pro. And I thought I'd start here with my worst channel data, and this is the Oxygen 3 data, but I don't think it was the camera's fault whatsoever because daylight was approaching and it was starting to get a little bit cloudy. So this data is slightly noisy. Uh, it was taken with a seven nanometer bandpass O3 filter, uh, but overall it's still pretty good. I, the square sensor has actually grown a lot on me for these deep sky images. So let's go ahead and look at the Sulfur 2 data now, and you can see this is a lot cleaner and it's actually pretty prominent. The sulfur comes in quite nicely actually in this nebula and it's what gives it such striking contrast. And that's really one of the big things about monochrome is a lot of these wispy, fuzzy details come out through monochrome, whereas it's a lot more challenging to do with a color camera. So again, a little bit more work, but it's actually not too bad if everything's mostly automated. So last but not least, Here's the hydrogen and alpha data. I uh, think this looks really good, really clean. Again, all of these were the same amount of time. This is just an hour and a half. So I took 18 five minute exposures. And again, a lot of those little wispy subtle details are coming through and just look how clean this data is. It's not really noisy whatsoever for an hour and a half. Like, yeah, there's a little bit, but for an hour and a half, that is not bad. And all of this was taken with my uh, William Optics Red Cat 51. I thought it was important for this review to take these images with the best glass that I have. And so, yeah, uh, I think this data looks really, really great. Now the ASI 533 series of camera is often considered an upgrade over the 183 series. Now I've used both 183 cameras a lot. My color camera, the 183 MC Pro, that basically lives on my RASA 8 and I've taken a ton of images through it. And my 183 MM Pro, the monochrome version, uh, I take a lot of images through my Red Cat 51 on it. So I have extensive experience with the 183 and I really enjoy this camera. The 533 though, is it really an upgrade? Well, in every important metric, pretty much a significant yes. It is a big upgrade. So let's go ahead and compare these uh, cameras real quick and then we'll uh, wrap it up from there. So let's quickly discuss the similarities between these two cameras and why they're often compared against each other. 
And that's mainly because they both use the same format of sensor. They use the one inch sensor size. So on the right, the 533, you can obviously see that one is a square. And the 183 on the left is a rectangle. The only other similarities though is they use the same body size and the back focus is the same as well for uh, these two cameras. So six and a half millimeters from sensor to flange, and then they both have the uh, 11 millimeter extension rings. Okay, so let's go ahead and compare the ASI 533 MM Pro to the ASI 183 MM Pro. So I'm specifically comparing the monochrome versions here, but the color versions are fairly similar. Now, the 533 MM Pro is a significant upgrade in four major metrics. The first is the well capacity. So the well capacity on the 533 is 50,000 electrons, whereas on the 183, it's only 15,000. So this camera is three times, over three times better than the 183. The next metric to really look at is the ADC. The 533 has a 14-bit ADC, whereas the 183 only has a 12-bit ADC. So again, that is a significant upgrade, just right there. This camera, the 533, has no amp glow at all, whereas the 183 has some of the worst amp glow in any of the ZWO cameras. It's substantial. So again, a clear winner here in the 533. And then lastly is the read noise. So this camera's read noise at its best performance is one. This camera's read noise is 1.5 electrons. So 50% worse in the 183 than the 533. So this camera in all four of those major categories isn't just an upgrade, it's a significant upgrade. Now, the ASI 183 though, if you look at the quantum efficiency, this camera, the 533, actually has a higher peak quantum efficiency. But remember, so I don't really love that term, I like to look at the average quantum efficiency across the visible spectrum. And if you look at the quantum efficiency graphs for both of these cameras, you'll notice the 183 has a pretty decent peak quantum efficiency of 84%, but it starts to drop off fairly quickly into the reds. And again, that's pretty normal. Comparing these two cameras together, the 533 and the 183 quantum efficiency, you'll see that the 533 has a overall higher quantum efficiency. So again, another upgrade there. Now be careful when you look at these graphs because one only goes to 90%, the other goes to 100%. So don't let that fool you. Overall, the 533 does have the better quantum efficiency as well. The other thing you wanna be aware of is both of these have one inch sensors, like I said, however, the 183 has a smaller pixel size than the 533. It has 2.4 micron pixel size. So essentially, this thing has more pixels than this one. So you're gonna get longer download times on this, but you're also gonna get a lot more resolution out of it. Whereas this one, you're gonna have faster downloads, but less resolution. And that's where the real debate comes in because the 183 and my Rasa 8 are like a match made in heaven. Like, the pictures I've taken with the horse head, of the Horsehead Nebula with this combination, they're very well resolved and they're really stunning. Uh, and so it's gonna be hard for me to change over. However, the 533, as I've seen, as I've been taking pictures with it, the images are so clean. It has that 14-bit ADC. It's just a way better camera overall in terms of specs. So odds are I probably will be switching. And that's the fun part of astronomy, right? There's no one size fits all solution in terms of cameras, in terms of telescopes. There's always give and take. That's also the expensive part of astronomy as well, right? Because you want multiple cameras to do multiple things. All right, well that wraps up my review of the ZWO ASI 533 MM Pro. Now I have an absolutely perfect night tonight, so I'm excited to keep imaging with this. And to be honest, I had really high expectations for this camera and it did not disappoint. It is a blast to use. So for all those that are considering a 533 or current users that have taken amazing images, I'm really looking forward to seeing what people do with this camera. So as always, thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great day and clear skies.